Hello everyone and welcome back to another release for Xen Orchestra. This time of the year it's back to school time and it's Xen Orchestra 5.74 and we are really happy to see you again. Um, we get some holidays during the, 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 the last two months but we continue to work uh, on the big project of Xen Orchestra and especially Xen Orchestra Lite. Uh, so I won't uh, make you wait more and uh, Oliver, if you want to start with all the new stuff in uh, Xen Orchestra, uh, uh, here you go. Uh, sure, thank you Mark. Um, so uh, let's see uh, on the blog post uh, what uh, do we have uh, on this month. So the first, I would say, relatively big news we have uh, for this uh, August release is backup encryption. So. As it said, backup encryption is simply a way that Zen Orchestra will encrypt your um, backup, your data from your virtual machine disks and then transfer it to the backup location, meaning that both the uh, transfer from Zen Orchestra to the backup location will be uh, encrypted, the traffic will be encrypted, and obviously the file that will land there will be also encrypted. Uh, the only thing to know is <clears throat> encryption is working with our new format, backup format, that we use initially for uh, S3 backup uh, capabilities, and so uh, we managed to quickly add new features to this, like uh, compression, like we already uh, uh, we are already doing um, since uh, we started to make the S3 backup mode. But then also now we added this encryption mode, and in the future we'll even have uh, potentially the duplication. But anyway, uh, the big role of encryption is obviously to allow you to store all your uh, VM disks uh, without the ability for anyone to read them where you store them. So for example, if you want to store your backup to, a, I don't know, uh, any share, network share that's not in a product network or even a storage that is you have no physical access uh, to it, but you can't control either the physical access, like for a uh, third party storage provider and so on. Uh, you don't need to trust uh, the, the third party provider right now, since you can use encryption because they won't be able to read anything. And to make encryption, obviously you need something called um, a key or a passphrase. So we choose a passphrase, which is like, kind of password that's uh, very similar. So basically uh, how it works functionally speaking is relatively simple. You create a new backup storage, uh, backup repository, or that we call that a remote. You need, you must create a new one and you will select the passphrase for the entire remote, for the entire backup repository. And then uh, the key, this passphrase won't be stored obviously uh, on this backup repository. It will only store inside your Zen Orchestra appliance. Meaning that if someone access to uh, the storage without having also access to your Zen Orchestra, they won't be able to read the contents, it will be fully encrypted. Um, in the future, we also plan the possibility to uh, give you, if you want, the uh, possibility to save your passphrase to, to your um, Zen Orchestra account, meaning that if you lose everything and you forget what was the passphrase, you will be able to restore that. And again, um, if you remember the passphrase, for example, and you lose your Zen Orchestra, but you kept your uh, backup storage, then uh, when you import a fresh Zen Orchestra, you connect to uh, remote with the previous connection information and using the, the right passphrase, then you will be able to access the data. So it's even, uh, it will stay coherent even if you lose your Zen Orchestra, but kept your passphrase. And uh, obviously uh, this is a pretty strong encryption. It's uh, AES. So um, we, we choose to, to use something uh, that's uh, secure, that is mature. Uh, we didn't reinvent the wheel regarding the encryption algorithm, obviously, because that would have been a bad idea. But anyway, uh, this is uh, available now as a preview mode, uh, meaning that uh, it will land in latest release of Zen Orchestra XOA, uh, latest release channel, but please test it first. Uh, we wanted to have a longer, uh, let's say, um, a test phase, but sadly with the summer and, uh, you know, even the community is taking some vacation. So the test phase wasn't uh, 
long enough to our taste. So that's why we prefer to release it first uh, in latest as a preview. So feel free to test, uh, give feedback on the forum and, and tell us if there is uh, any problem or things to improve. But this is a great step forward to um, you know get Zen Orchestra as a complete backup tool with all the bells and whistles that you can find for, I don't know, Veeam and other uh, biggest software of doing backups for VMware, for example. So this is important to us to, to continue to innovate and bring uh, features to our uh, backup solution. So that's it for backup encryption. Uh, clearly, um, all the questions could be uh, asked on the forum. So feel free again, if there is anything you want to learn about it or try, uh, it will be available in the UI and then uh, feedback is very welcome. So <clears throat> next topic is related to Exolite. So as Mark said, initially, we did a lot of progress on that front. So just a quick reminder regarding Exolite. So it's meant to be a kind of standalone and uh, let's say integrated small management interface, web interface for your XCPNG host that will be integrated inside it. So it's not meant to replace an orchestra. It's a, when you bootstrap your infrastructure, you have nothing, you want to create some uh, your initial virtual machines, deploy Zen Orchestra and so on. So this is meant to be used in that case, or even if you have maybe just one host inside your infrastructure, that might be enough. But remember, it won't be persistent. It's just a, a client that will be loaded inside your web browser. So it could be handy, but it's not replacing Zen Orchestra. But anyway, um, now we got the alpha one. Uh, if you remember, we already started to make some work uh, the last year we started officially and then we uh, continued to work on React, but then we decided to switch to uh, Vue.js. And now the uh, Vue version is, uh, let's say, uh, on par and even a bit better than the uh, previous React version. So it's still a very early alpha version. Uh, it's not meant to get any action on your VMs and so on, but you could have a, a console and you can see the VM and get a kind of tree view. Um, on the left. So that's uh, a good start. We got the layout and so on. If you already deployed the previous React version, uh, the good news is you have nothing to do. Just force refresh um, uh, Control plus uh, F5 key, for example, or Control and R key. Uh, that will uh, force refresh the page and empty the cache. And so you will have the latest version. And if you didn't, Deployed already, uh, it's a simple wget command that you enter in your host and then go to the IP address of your host slash exolite.html and that's it. You'll log in with the root password that you use to log into the host and you will see the menu and the global layout. So that, as I said, there's not a lot to do, but from this base, we'll continue to add more components in the next weeks. So it should move relatively faster now. We got all the technical base foundation, I would say, uh, regarding Exolite with the new Vue.js. So yeah, it truly considered as the first public alpha, and we hope that uh, just for the next month, we already have more components and maybe uh, in a matter of very few months, actions and maybe VM creation and so on. So a lot to come in there. So stay tuned and uh, don't miss any announcements regarding this. So that's it for Exolite. And again, uh, Feedback is always welcome. There is a dedicated thread on the forum. So if there's feedback you want to bring, uh, always a great thing to do. Um, <clears throat> back on two quality of life features we released uh, this month. Uh, the first one is relatively simple, but could be very handy when you are using high availability. Uh, the way it works inside Citrix Hypervisor or XCPNG is using a shared storage to store kind of heartbeat directly inside the shared storage repository. But uh, right now, uh, until now in Zen Orchestra, you, you won't be able, uh, you wouldn't be able to see if which storage repository was used as uh, storage for this uh, HA capability. So right now we added the uh, kind of small label on it. And you will be sure that this very storage repository is very important. And if you want to make any maintenance on it, you will probably need to disable high availability first and then do your maintenance. Because if you don't, then the uh, HA will think there is a problem with the storage and then we'll try to fence the hosts and so on. So as usual with HA, it's a more complicated beast than not using it. So uh, if you use it, you need to use it with caution, but this kind of label will help you to avoid any mistakes that you could make if you use a uh, higher ability. 
The second point is um, another quality of life, but more related to a uh, health status of your infrastructure, is the ability to detect VDIs, which uh, doesn't have a uh, parent VHD. So as you may know, in SMAP PV1, the uh, current and also slash legacy storage tag of Zen server and XCPNG. When you do a snapshot, basically uh, it will create uh, two children. One will be the active disk, one will be the snapshot. And so you will have a parent that will be in read only. And if you lose that parent, then uh, you are in big trouble because it means that uh, we only have the new blocks on the new disks and we do not have the reference. And sometimes it happens, some mistakes could be made, some race conditions could happen. It's not uh, very often uh, uh, at least, but uh, still it might be uh, helpful for people debugging or trying to see if there's a problem with their story. Now we'll display all the VDIs, all the disks that will have missing parents, which is not normal at all. But again, it happens. So that's you know putting you in the safe side of things. As soon as you see something like this, if you have support, that might be the right time to uh, open a ticket. And then if you do not, uh, you can ask for some assistance uh, in the uh, community forums. And uh, this is truly to to help you to maybe sometime even see the problem before it actually cause uh, a real damage to your storage but clearly this is not a, a good sign and that might block the garbage collection system and then even if the other chains are correct uh, if you remove snapshots the chains will continue to grow and so on so that's truly something that you should keep an eye on it and that's it for the features, but uh, the last part is more an announcement regarding a, a new graphic identity we, we choose. So you might maybe seen that already, uh, but if you click on the uh, uh, the small rectangle on the, on the bottom, you will go to the article on the Vates website, uh, and we will detail there uh, the choices we made for the new identity, why we made those choices, and the new logo. So if you want to take a look, if you are curious on the new Zen Orchestra, new uh, XCPNG logo, and so on, take a look there. Uh, you will have an interesting preview on all of that, and the same thing apply if you want to provide feedback uh, those are the logos and themes we choose already it's chosen but anyway feedback is always welcome uh, you will read that one of the main goal um, is to get a let's say a, a coherent identity for all our product as you may know we did you know first an orchestra then xcpng and so uh, we wanted to truly unify all of this because as you may or may not know, most of our, you know, uh, leads and people asking to become, you know, uh, customers in the short term, in the last four, even six months, the vast majority right now are VMware uh, customers. So that's very interesting. And it kind of, you know, um, made us think about getting a unified solution for people coming from another world than Zen, because historically we were coming from the Zen world. So it was pretty easy to talk with people used to run on Zen server, used to run on Citrix hypervisor and so on. But now things are changing. We've got customers coming from completely other worlds and unifying the, uh, you know, this um, identity is truly important to know that you are using a uh, solution and services. So that's it for me on my side, uh, Mark. If you want to make uh, your closing thoughts, uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I, th you. I think you covered it pretty pretty well. I would uh, just add about the new graphic identity that uh, it's also a really good timing for us because working on XOLite and XO6 is the we it forced us to rework on what we would like to see and how we would like to see it in the application part. So it makes totally sense to rework also the graphic identity of the brand around the application to have, as Oliver said, a very homogeneic uh, identity across all the solution. Because Vates is already a 10 years old uh, company, so uh, many things have changed since the, the first logo that has been created uh, 10 years ago. Uh, that that's pretty much it for me too. The release should be available in uh, about uh, a one hour, I think, in the in the in the appliance of uh, of in your your appliance, and uh, everything will be available on the on the blog post that will be published in uh, in a few minutes. If you have any question, it's time, and uh, if not, uh, then uh, we will see you on the next release in about a month. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.